I've wanted to talk about Timeless for a long time, but now that I've got round to it, the show's ended. After being cancelled after its first season, then renewed for another, then cancelled after its second season, Timeless was rightfully given a two-hour time slot for a finale special, which is what I want to focus on today. Being part of the small UK sector of Timeless's fan following, I regret to have played no part in the first Save Timeless campaign, as the series hadn't even aired in the UK at that time. Things played out similarly after the second season, and I've been dying to make this video ever since the show's finale aired back in December in the US. I can't understand how it took four months for NBC to send over two hours of video to E4 and to slot it into a viewing schedule, but hey, what do I know about TV programming? Let's talk about the finale. So yeah, that means spoilers about everything. There was a lot that Timeless needed to do in these two hours in order to give a satisfying ending, and for the most part, it did a really good job. The conclusion of Flynn's story not only achieving his definitive goal to see his family again, but also finally receiving the diary from Lucy in 2014 was immensely satisfying. Even though that Lucy telling him that his plan to eliminate Rittenhouse would ultimately fail seemed pretty stupid in terms of opening an alternative timeline in which Flynn never bothered attempting, it actually added to Flynn's determination we see throughout the first series and his defiance of fate, a theme very prevalent throughout the show. Lucy and Wyatt's relationship also tied up nicely, especially in the finale second part, where it really felt like these people had known each other for a long time. However, the implementation of a potential romance between Lucy and Flynn didn't quite work amongst the other closures of character arcs. It was good in terms of the writer's acknowledgement that a relationship between the two was possible, but we never got to see what the journal claimed was going to happen, because time was changed. And before we get into the working out the time travel part of this video, we must first re-establish how time travel works in this show. Person A travels back in time and leaves person B in the present. If person A changes something in the past and returns to the present, person B will have been affected by the change, but person A won't have. No new memories will have been created for person A. Whilst time traveling, they essentially take their version of history with them. This is the foundation we can all agree on, as it's seen in pretty much every episode of the show. But how about changing the future from the past to change the past? Yeah, I know, this is where it gets really tricky. When the Time Team are in 1848, they realise the only way to get Rufus back is to kill Jessica in 2012, so that in 2018, they never chased Jessica to 1888, which would lead to Rufus being shot. So, Flynn travels to 2012, kills Jessica, and sends the lifeboat back to 1848. The rest of the Time Team in 1848 reunite with Rufus, which for him isn't a reunion as he's been alive all the time. Here, we see a crossover of two very different timelines. Abiding by the same foundation rules we established earlier, Lucy, Wyatt and Gia haven't gained any new memories of Rufus being alive. For Rufus, Jessica was never alive, and he's now in 1848 to take down a Rittenhouse sleeper agent. But what's strange here is which timeline takes dominance over the other. Because remember, both timelines are existing in 1848. In this case, when Rufus is brought back, the environment around the time team favours Rufus's timeline, not the one we see early in the episode. This could make sense, as if you imagine the time and place in 1848 as Person B, and Flynn time travelling as Person A, then the rules are maintained in that Person B is affected by the change, just that Lucy, White and Gia aren't part of Person B, as they've already travelled back to that point. But when the team return to 2018 from 1848, the original timeline is favoured, the one in which Rufus died. But actually, it's his timeline that should be favoured. Technically, only Lucy, Wyatt and Gia should remember Jessica living and Rufus dying, not Mason and Agent Christopher. The 2018 they return to should be the one changed by Flynn and the one Rufus left. I can actually overlook this as it never occurred to me whilst watching it, and it's an example of very messy, complicated time travel, even after my explanation. However, the scene where Emma discovers that Jessica has been wiped from the timeline stood out at first as just being plain wrong. <laughs> Here, in 2018, Emma remembers Jessica, but another Rittenhouse agent in the same time and place doesn't. If Emma and the Rittenhouse agent were both in the same time and place when Flynn travelled to 2012, then neither of them should have remembered Jessica. 
I actually went through this episode over and over again, trying to make sense of how Emma could have remembered Jessica. And the only way that this works logically is if the scene at the end of the episode, where Emma bribes the helicopter pilot with the gold, chronologically comes before Jessica's removal from the timeline. And the more you think about it, the more it gradually begins to make sense. Because after Jessica returns to 2018 from 1848, Emma tells her she's going to Korea 1950. Therefore, whilst Emma is in 1950 bribing the helicopter pilot, Flynn travels to 2012 and kills Jessica. That way, Emma is person A in our established rules when returning to 2018 from 1950, whilst Flynn is an additional person A who actually changes the timeline, and the Rittenhouse agent in 2018 is person B. Good God, when you thought the time travel in Endgame was confusing. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the probabilities of all these different timelines still running smoothly after Jessica's removal can seem unbelievably slim. Fair enough, the chances that Lucy, Wyatt and Gia would be in 1848 with Rufus at the same place were quite high, as both were after the sleeper agent in either timeline. But who knows what the written house Emma returns to in 2018 from 1950 could look like without Jessica. Jessica was a pretty key role in Rittenhouse, especially towards the end of season two, and she basically became the one that Emma trusted the most after her takeover. So it's really hard to think about how the majority of the second season would have played out without Jessica being there, which is exactly why Timeless deserved a third season. In an interview, co-creator Sean Ryan said that there were some moments or storylines where I thought, wow, if we had like four episodes to play this out, it would have been great. And I'm really glad about this, as is exactly what I take from this finale. There could have been many more episodes exploring the different timelines we never got to see. Firstly, the one that the future Wyatt and Lucy came from in 2023, or Rufus's version of events without Jessica, or the future that Lucy's journal claimed would hold for her and Flynn, or the impact Jessica's absence would have on Rittenhouse itself. This would have allowed for that extra length of character development, and for Emma to have a better end than just being shot. So in conclusion, whilst I don't particularly see this finale as two good episodes of Timeless, I'm beyond grateful as a fan to be able to watch this, as a framework for what a third season would have worked around. I'm so happy that NBC decided to make this that it doesn't really bother me if the time travel elements are so complex, because we got the best conclusion there could have been under the show's circumstances. So thank you so much for watching this video, please make sure to leave a like and comment what you thought about the Timeless finale, and what else you would have liked to have seen in a third season. Thanks again, goodbye.